was Rudy at fault for what happened to Paul here? And should he have listened to the man-god's advice before even making this journey to the desert continent to face this labyrinth to save Zenith and to also save Roxy? There's a lot to discuss here, and this is something that's been kind of actively eating away at my mind for the last few days now, ever since basically the latest episode, episode 22 of Mushiku Tensei Season 2 came out, and I've seen a lot of discourse and a lot of discussion around kind of what could have been, what could have been changed, and what could have Rudy done differently for the outcome of what just happened within this arc wouldn't have been as bleak as it was. Because anyone that has, you know, sat down and, you know, watched this episode of Mushiku Tensei knows what happened to Paul. Paul straight up, he dies. He's half the man he once was, and he, uh, he smiles in his final words towards Rudy. Like, he just smiles, and that, that's it. Lights go out. And then, to cut, kind of put the cherry on top, once all this is said and done, after the sacrifice of Rudy's father, Paul, Zenith wakes up, and she has literally no memory. She just seems to be basically acting like an infant, because she doesn't speak or anything like that. So, it's like, Everything went wrong. Anything that could have went right for Rudy kind of went wrong in, you know, the latest episode of Mushiku Tensei. The only thing that's necessarily went right for him ever since he got here is basically saving Roxy. That's the, really the only takeaway you can get from this entire arc, is that everything of Rudy's decisions pretty much led to the point where he almost lost, or he pretty much did lose his whole family almost, which is legitimately sad. So let's just, let's dive headfirst into this, let's talk about it. So, what could have Rudy done differently here for obviously Paul wouldn't have died? I guess let's start off with the man god, and what he said a few episodes back. He gave Rudy two different options. He basically said, Rudy, stay at the academy, you know, be ready for your child, you know, from Sylphie, and eventually when the mating season comes around, go after the two beast girls and, you know, choose them as your two wives. That's pretty much what he implied, or choose one of them as his wife. And it was a very interesting subject, because basically the man god came on to Rudy saying like, hey, you know, you need to cheat on your wife, you need to already get another one and all that, and you should not go to the desert continent to be able to save your mother. And obviously, thanks to circumstances with, you know, Aisha and all that Norn, it eventually led to Rudy disregarding what the man god says to go and save his mother Zenith and help out Paul on that journey, which thanks to those actions, it led him to being able to save Roxy. But the point of the matter is, is let's just go on a hypothetical and say, if Rudy did not in fact, okay, go to the desert continent to actually save his mother Zenith, what theoretically could have happened differently? I think this is the first thing to really talk about before I go any further. So, looking at what Ru Rudy has done, technically to arrive to the desert continent, he used the teleportation that orc that, you know, the dragon god uses to get there very quickly. Obviously, if he was not going and didn't get that information from Nanahoshi, you know, Elena Lise would not have been able to use that information to be able to get there quickly, so it would have taken about eight to nine months for her to potentially get there to be able to actually participate and help out Paul in his fight to be able to save Zenith. So... Obviously, we know at that point in time, Roxy would have been long dead and gone, because what we know from a few episodes back is that Roxy was literally lost within the labyrinth, had no way out, and literally for a full month she was fighting, eating, like, you know, toxic food all within the labyrinth just to be able to survive, and if Rudy was just a few seconds late, she straight up would have died. She would have died in that given moment, but obviously thanks to Rudy's intervention, him arriving, Roxy did not die. And so, his actions of disregarding the man-god's advice saved her life. But it seems like him saving her life is also probably eventually was the butterfly effect that eventually caused it to where Paul had to lose his life. That's what you can kind of take away from the information, is that it was the exchange, equivalent exchange. Now, let's just say hypothetically that uh, Rudy wouldn't have arrived. What would have happened? Okay, let's say he disregarded, you know, everything, and he decided to stay at, you know, his home, you know, where the academy is. 
What would have happened to Roxy? Well, as I've already kind of laid it out for everybody, Roxy probably would have succumbed to starvation, death by monster, whatever. Nobody would have been potentially able to make it in time, because obviously the reason why they got into the dungeon so quickly to find her was because Rudy was there, and also thanks to him kind of having a sixth sense to know where Roxy was, he bashed through walls just to get to her. So, yeah, factoring all of these points in... Roxy, most likely, 90% plus, was just going to be dead if Rudy did not actually go. And so, him disregarding that advice is why she survived. Now, let's go even further. So, Paul's death. Now, Paul obviously dies in this fight. We see what happens. We know the aftermath. We know what happened here. Why did Paul die? Well, we gotta look at one major reason. And that is because Rudy straight up he lost focus. Or in this case, it wasn't that he completely lost focus, it was because he was so inexperienced and he couldn't comprehend what the Hydra was doing because it was literally using its decapitated, like, you know, body limbs, like its limbs, just to slam itself like a whip up against the ground. And so its heads, its, like, headless heads was just slamming everywhere and Rudy just could not comprehend what he was seeing within his actual magical demonic eye, which is what led to Paul jumping in and pushing Rudy out of the way. Now, here's the thing, okay? Obviously, Paul died thanks to Rudy being there. Like, in a way, if Rudy wasn't there, Paul wouldn't have taken that hit by the Hydra. Paul would not have died. It was very clear just by the onset of the fight alone that Paul was basically soloing the Hydra. He, he was soloing the Hydra, taking head out by head, and he was really doing a good job with it. The only thing that they needed was fire. Now, at this point in time in this alternate timeline, obviously, you know, Roxy's dead. And let's just say Rudy's not here because he decided to stay back. Well, basically, that means that they don't really have much of a mage that can really burn, let's say, the heads to keep them, you know, cauterized. So they would need to use makeshift oils, firebombs, etc., probably to be able to keep the Hydra down. The question is, who would procure this? Where would they get it from? Obviously, there is a town nearby. They probably can get stuff like that. But you gotta imagine, in the heat of the moment and all that, would they have came up with something to be able to stop the Hydra's regeneration? Or would it, would it be thanks to Rudy why they figured it out in the first place? And would Rudy be the only one that would have come to that conclusion thanks to his presence actually being there. And then, that's not even including the actual breath attack. So, like, that is another big detail here. When Rudy actually stands up and has to defend everybody with the giant fire breath attack that the Hydra does, it's thanks to Rudy why none of them die. They would have been straight up wiped out by its breath if he did not use his water magic here. So the question is, if Rudy was not present... Would the team been able to survive this? Would they have been ready for the fire breath? Who really knows? That's up in the air. But let's just go on a limb here and say hypothetically the team would have been able to deal with this because they've heard about fire breath. They have, you know, they're a veteran group that has fought a lot of monsters, etc. Even if this Hydra is out of the realm of, you know, normal, it's very different from a normal monster. It's very clear that, you know, once you're adventuring for a very long time, you're able to key on a few things. And it's very clear just from, like, the fighting alone with Paul that Paul is legit no slouch. Like, this man is an absolute menace when it comes to monster hunting. Him just outright ruthlessly slaughtering this Hydra like nothing. He is definitely someone that you would want on your team as, like, a DPS. And so, judging by his intuition and how good he is and skilled... I truly do not think that he would have been caught by the fire breath. I think he would have dodged it to some degree. There might have been more precautions in place since Rudy technically would not be there because obviously they were highly reliant on Rudy's magic to be able to get through this fight. I think that was a big detail that we need to really weigh in on is that they were very reliant on his magic and that most likely if they did not have Rudy, they either would have hired outside help, maybe other mages, etc. to come in and help out or they would have potentially just went in and been a lot more cautious about everything since Roxy potentially in this timeline is dead and gone. So, it, it's a very interesting perspective to wonder about, but overall, Rudy's overall presence, at the very least we can say, is why Paul died. I, I think in the grand scheme of things, Paul died thanks to Rudy's presence. Even if, you know, Rudy couldn't have done anything about the situation because he was in a rock and a hard place and that was the whole point of his decision of staying or going, he would have regrets no matter what. It makes you wonder what would have been differently if he would have chose to stay home or not. Obviously, we'll never know that detail because clearly, you know, the story went the other way. But it is very interesting. I love that thought experiment, just wondering how the story could have deviated and who would have died, who would have lived, etc. And, you know, if everything went 
right, you know, and all that. You know, obviously, if Roxy was lost, Rudy would be devastated, but he would still have Sylphie, he would have his kid, etc., his father, his mother, and all that. You know, the question is, with this whole impact here at the end, with, you know, Zenith not really having, you know, a mind or so, for what you can see, you know, Paul would have been... The you know the caretaker he would have taken care of her he probably would have came over to Rudy's place and he probably would have stayed with them taking care of Zena or something so it's just it's a very interesting direction the story could have went but I do think that overall that um yeah if we want to say anything the reason why Paul probably died is because of Rudy being there it's not because of his mess up not paying attention what people want to say or whatever but it's legitimately because of his presence and his actions of choosing this. But obviously he would have sacrificed Roxy too. So I don't know if he would have been happy with that either. Then he would have been plagued by the regret of he would have lost someone he loved. And he basically worshipped like a goddess. So yeah, that's a whole other can of worms. What would have happened to him if you know that happened too? So yeah, he was damned if he does or doesn't. And it's just that's the part of life. You know, the decisions you make are set in stone. There's nothing you can do about it. And now at that point, once they are set in stone, you got to live with them. And you got to figure out how you can move past them and grow from them as well. But anyways, I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you so so much for watching. May all of you have a fantastic day or night wherever you live. Be safe, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for the next video, and also Elden Ring soon. Uh, anyone else playing it? If you, you guys are playing Elden Ring, let me know in the comments below as well, because I know I'm going to definitely be dedicating a lot of my time on Elden Ring release day. But okay, guys. Talk to you later. Chibi out.